Hey guys, it's Yuri Joe 93 Welcome back to another video. So even though we're doing this late at night and we got the bright lights, earlier today I posted my review for episode one of What If Season 2. I'm really enjoying What If. It's, it feels like the Marvel content that we deserved for a long time. I love What If Season 1, as I talked about in my previous video. Some of my favorite episodes were the Marvel Zombies episodes, um, the episode with Doctor Strange where we explored Strange Supreme, which they should have explored more of in Multiverse of Madness, but they failed epically. All the stuff with Peggy Carter, Captain Carter, I know a lot of people don't like that character. I really like that character. My sister even said she had problems with her, but I really like Captain Carter. And so we'll talk about her more in episode five, because this sets her a big episode. But in today's what if episode review, today we will do what if episode two for season two, what if Peter Quill attacked? And this one deals with the 1980s Avengers team. So you have the likes of Howard Stark um, and the Supreme Intelligence from Captain Marvel recruit, and of course Peggy, older Peggy, not Peggy, Captain Carter Peggy, but just normal like older Shield Peggy. They're basically like the Nick Fury of this team and they've recruited a new team of Avengers. You have Lawrence Fishburne from Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania becoming his old persona of Goliath. We have Thor Odinson coming back, being voiced by Chris Hemsworth again, which was brilliant. And you have, um, you have, um, King T'Chaka, T'Challa's dad, in the flesh in his present older time. Uh, we get to see his run as Black Panther. We also get to see Bucky Barnes, the Winter Soldier, which is always a pleasure. So we got this great old team. Um, I'm trying to think if I missed anyone. But, yeah, no, I think that's basically the team. So we got, so we got all these great heroes jumping into battle and joining the fight, and it was incredible. So I want to see more of these 80s Avengers. You really just feel like, this felt like the expendables of um, of 80s Avengers. Like, you, you really felt like, you know, T'Challa's got the feeling. You have, oh yeah, Hank Pym was also on the team. I forgot, Hank Pym, Ant-Man was great. So he tried to connect with Star-Lord, thanks to his daughter Janet. Oh, uh, not Janet, thank, yeah, thanks to his daughter Janet, Janet, they were able to connect with everything that was going on. Um, Hope Van, not Janet, sorry, Hope Van Dyne, that's what I was missing. Janet's the mom, I always get those two confused, but, so, you really get to get this feeling of what's going on with, with this story, we get to see, um, Ego comes back, we get to see a face-off with him, this time in a much more interesting capacity, um, I love, I would love to see these characters in live action, I love T'Chaka, I need more King T'Chaka, hopefully T'Chaka's in, um, Eyes of Wakanda, because I, I have a video coming out about Eyes of Wakanda tomorrow, but I really just think that this 80s Avengers team was something unique, something strong, and I loved watching them fight. And also, something I never thought I needed in my life, seeing Bucky and Peter, uh, seeing Bucky and Thor, which I realized in Infinity War and Endgame, we never got to see Bucky and Thor interact, even though they were in the same place, considering they both showed up in Wakanda together, and we saw them again in Endgame, they never really interact. And it was great to see, like, even though Stark had one option, pulling his little reference, like, Tony pulls in Infinity War from shoving it down the garbage disposal. Really loved how they built up this amazing um, episode. Like, you really felt the presence, the power, all these great things were just so cool. Like, I love the music. I love the epicness of fighting the almost, like, evil Sandman copies of, um, of our evil, um, nemesis, um, being that of Ego, we got more background story, but then we get this Celestial Star-Lord. Star-Lord ends up, just like he does in Guardians 2, ends up turning against his father because his father murdered his mother, as we knew from the original Guardians timeline. But as the Watcher says, there are infinite timelines and infinite possibilities. So this was really good. I love this 80s episode. I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give this episode a 9.1 out of 10. It's my second favorite no, sorry. This is my third favorite of the season so far. I really love this episode. I really love the vibe we got. I really thought this was strong. And I really just can't wait to see more of these Avengers, hopefully, in the future. What did you guys think about What If Episode 2 of Season 2? Let me know your ranking. My list isn't the right list. It's just my list. And I'd love to hear yours. Have a marvelous night, and I'll catch you in the next video. Woo!